Hello everyone, this is Sudip Tu from Technical Potpourri and welcome to my new video. As I promised last time, in this video I am going to show you an at first example where I will be using all different types of HTTP methods right from Salesforce Flow. So let's see that in action. So before I start, let me explain what I am trying to do. I am trying to use this RESTful API, it's a publicly available endpoint, anybody can use that and the URL is restful-api.dev. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to use the post call first to add something to the database. By doing that, it will give me, this post call will give me a response. Part of the response will be, there will be an ID. And then what I want to do, I want to capture this ID and use the put call, put method to update the recently inserted data using the ID. Similar way, I want to use the patch to partially update the values for that ID. And finally, I'm going to delete the record using the ID. So basically, on a very high level, using the post call to create a new record, post call will give me a newly created ID. I'll be using that ID to update the record, to partially update the record, and finally to delete the record. So let's see that in an example. So here I am in my Salesforce flow. Before we perform HTTP callout from Salesforce flow, we need to create name credential and external credential. I have done that in my previous video and also have a dedicated video where I've shown you how you can create the name credential, add that to your permission set, and then create the external credential. So if you haven't seen that video, that's very important that you understand the process. I'm not going to repeat that, but what I'm going to do, I'm going to put the link of that video in the description as well as on the top right corner. So please pause this video, go and watch that video because that's very important. That is something that is needed to perform HTTP callout from your Salesforce flow. So let's assume that you have seen the video or you know how to do that. So I have already created the name credential and I'm going to use the same name credential in this example. So I'll start with creating a new flow. What I'll do, I'll start by clicking on plus sign here and click on action and then I click on click create HTTP callout. The first thing I'll do the post call. So my post call external service. I'm going to select this credential, click on next. Here I'll choose my post call invocable action. From the method I'll choose post. In the URL I'll pass this value. In the sample request I'll copy the request from here and review. Similar way on the sample response, I'll copy the response from the website, put it here, review, done, and click on save. Now in this page, what I'm going to do, I'm going to my do post call. Here in the body, I will choose a variable as my my post call input and click on done and click on done. Now, since it's a post call, I need to create an assignment, which is basically assigning my request to the post call. So let's create an assignment record. Assign post call values and here the variable that I've created my post call input name. I'm going to give a name as this name. Let's let's put all other values quickly. So I've assigned all the values to the post call request. And now let's save the flow, give it a name as advanced HTTP callout, save and activate. 
let's do the debug and see what response I'm getting back. As you can see, my post call is successful because the response code is 200. But the important thing is this value ID. This is the ID which I want to capture and use this value to perform my output, patch and delete activity. So I have the ID available. I'll be using that ID in my subsequent HTTP call. So next what I want to do, I want to use the put to update the values in the record. So let's click on this plus sign, click on action and click on create HTTP callout. This time my put external service using put and here in the name credential I choose this one. Here my put invocable action in the method I'll choose put. So now here I want to use the URL path. For URL path if you can see here, the URL path is slash object slash seven. What is this seven? Seven is ID, but I don't want to use seven. Rather, I want to use the ID which I received from my previous post call. So what I'll do, I'll pass this and here I will put ID here. I can put any name, for example, my record ID. And the moment I do that, actually it's not supported. So, only alphanumeric characters so I'll choose my ID the moment I do that it says what is the type of my ID it's a string right okay and then here I want to do a sample request so click on new copy the sample request from here put it this and review done similar way I need to copy the sample response I click here done review and done so looks like my put request is done now click on save now the moment i click on save it's telling me that let's give a name so i need to put a name like my put call here it's telling me what will be the value of this my id so now value of the my id will be from my post call which is basically output from my do post call. So my do post call here and here is ID. If you remember, if I go to the post call is coming response ID. So this is the value which I want to pass to my put call. And in the request body, I am going to create a new variable, which is my put input request and click on done and all looks good click on done now again the input i need to create an assignment so let's create an assignment assignment for put request and here my put request variable is my put request input request name i'll copy this one here And let's put rest of the values as well. So I provided all the assignment. The one property I'm adding here, which is a color property and also updating the price. So I'll click on done, save, and let's do the debug activate and let's do the debug now as you can see this is my first assignment and my first post call so in the first post call i got id now i'm using that id to do my next put call and if you see this is the id i'm using my id and by doing that I am actually updated the values. So previously when I created the post call, there is no property called color. But in the put request, I have added a new property called color. And if you can see here, color equals to silver. 
and you will also get an updated timestamp like what time it was updated so this is the way how i have used the id from the post call to use in the subsequent put call now let's do the same thing for the patch call right so let's go and create one more action and let's do this name as my HTTP patch call patch come on patch external service choose the same credential click on next here I'll post my patch invocable action from the method I'll choose patch in the URL again object 7 but I'm not going to use 7 rather I'm going to use the ID which I've received from the post call same put so I'm going to use slash objects and choose my ID and then all looks good it's telling what will be the type of my ID I choose type of my ID is string in the sample request I need to put this request which is good in the sample response I need to put this response and then review looks good click on save now here it's basically my do I'm doing the patch call here my ID my ID is basically output from my post call this and then ID and here I'll choose a new variable which will be my patch request input click on save and then click on done again I need to do an assignment so let's create the assignment record and give it a name as patch assignment here choose the variable I have just created which is my patch request and name here I am updating the name as Apple MacBook Pro updated name so click on done save as and then activate and then debug Now you'll see that this is my patch call. So my first call is assignment and followed by the post call, which gave me the ID. Now use that ID to in my second call, which is basically the put call. In that put request, I have set the color and change the price. And then use the same ID to partially update by using the patch call. And with that, the update successful and the new name is Apple MacBook Pro updated name and it was updated at that particular time. So the last thing that I want to show you how to use the delete which will be almost similar. Delete will basically delete the record. So for that I will be creating another action create HTTP and here my delete external service and I'll choose this one next. I'll put my delete invocable action in the method I'll choose delete in the path I'll copy this path but I don't want to use six again I'll be using the ID that I received from the post call looks good what will be the type of ID which is string there will be no request for the delete it will just be a response so I'll click on that and do that looks very good and click on save now to delete operation and here in the url path my id i'm getting from my post call which is basically my post call dot this and then this id and done save as and 
activate now let's do the debug again run and as you can see the last call is basically the delete call the response is again successful and the message that object with this id is deleted and this is the id which i received at the very beginning of my post call here is the id so this is the way how i have used the id or i how i have use the response from my post call in the subsequent put patch and delete call basically what i'm trying to show you is that flow became so powerful that now declarative way you can perform any type of http operations not only perform rather you can parse the response or you can use the response from the http call and use that in your following http call so it will be http chain request where response from first request is getting used in the subsequent request so i hope this video is helpful please let me know what is your use case how you are trying to use that um, very powerful feature in your project but if you think this video is helpful please hit the like icon share and please subscribe to my channel so that you can get update about all my upcoming videos till then thank you bye bye